Hi, very good morning children and uh, welcome to session 3, lesson biodiversity and its uh, conservation. So far, we learnt about uh, what is been by biodiversity process and the next uh, color code system. Color code system means here, we learnt about that uh, girl, you know, in this system, uh, we are able to find out what type of living organisms are present in our home and also in our surroundings. Okay, and the next, uh, we also learnt about variations in the plants like uh, grasses. Okay, what differences you can find in the uh, grass plants and the next uh, animals like a uh, hen and the uh, goats and uh, even there's a uh, human beings by taking, uh, you know, there's a uh, cricketers and the next uh, in a classroom, uh, some children like this, right? So, by observing all these things, now you may get to ask some questions. What are they? Are there any organisms with a hundred percent similarities between them? Now, if we carefully observe the animals, can you say that those two animals are having the same characters? No, we cannot find uh, the animals with a hundred percent similar characters, same characters. Even in uh, some characters, we can find some uh, differences. Why they show these uh, differences means for the development of that uh, species. Got it. So when the differences are more than that much, really, that leads to that uh, that leads to new type of uh, organisms. Got it. Okay, that's why they show much differences. And uh, what's the next one? Why do they differ from each other? Why do they differ from each other? Means just now I told you for the developmental process. For example, when we take a uh, you and your parents if you carefully observe both of you who are having a better characters you are your parents you you are having a better qualities when compared with your parents okay why means you know through this reproduction through this uh, sexual reproduction see the parents are able to produce a new animal or a new organism okay as you are formed from your both the parents, your mother and your father. You will get characters from uh, both of them. Okay, that's why ultimately you will get uh, more characters, more uh, qualities when compared with your parents. So in this way, because of this reproduction, uh, that means generation after generation, the characters, new characters are developed and uh, so that, that will develop into new species again and uh, you know what you call the process that process can be called as a uh, evolution that is called uh, evolution yeah got it yeah we call that as a uh, evolution and uh, what will happen if uh, all the plants are creepers you know creeper creeper means the plants which uh, grow only in a soil surface have you seen uh, grasses? Grasses grow only in the soil, like a uh, cucumber, right? Pumpkin, take them. You know, where they grow? Only on the soil surface. They cannot grow straight, erect, right? So, here, what is the question? What will happen if all the plants are creepers? Then what happens? Then uh, the whole planet will be completely filled with uh, the plants and so that uh, uh, for the uh, remaining animals, it becomes very, very difficult to survive. Okay, okay, that's why we, uh, we cannot find uh, all the plants as a creepers. You know, some are creepers, some are grasses, some are shrubs, some are bushes, some are trees, like this. Okay, and given hen and goat uh, both have legs, what diversity do you find between them? Means, if you carefully observe these two animals, they have a differences like uh, their length. Hen is uh, having short legs, while a uh, goat uh, have a uh, lengthy legs okay and the hen has only two while the goat bow or four right in this way we can find uh, uh, many differences okay or uh, all the nest of birds similar why you know here in your surroundings we can find different types of uh, birds nest and uh, can you say that all these nests are having the same structure no and even different birds they construct their uh, nest with the different materials some with the leaves and some with the leaflets some with the dry strips like this okay and uh, why means you know that is also because of uh, 
uh, their uh, developmental process right okay then do all animals have a similar organs and their functions if uh, you take amoeba and ami animal uh, amoeba and a human can you say these two are having the same uh, organs and functions no you know amoeba is a very it's a unicellular organism we can find only one cell uh, but uh, we are a multicellular okay even the organs are also different good okay <coughs> so based on all this uh, surveys based on this uh, survey and also this uh, clipping say this uh, biodiversity clipping have you seen this yeah biodiversity clipping we can conclude that uh, many kinds of plants and animal varieties exist in this world if you carefully observe our planet our planet is having a uh, great varieties great varieties of uh, plants and uh, animals you know just recently this uh, olympic games were uh, conducted where where yeah that's a uh, brazil that's a uh, brazil you know before they saw this uh, olympic games they made uh, one ad regarding this uh, olympic games what is in that ad they shown each game is uh, compared with the uh, compared with the uh, one uh, animal you know a weightlifter a weightlifter weighing uh, the weight and so that that weightlifter converts into an elephant okay and then uh, one uh, pole jumper pole jumper the pins are convert into this cheetah like that got it so why they compare these two like this means brazil you know brazil is uh, the place with the more biodiversity there we can find a great variety of plants and animal species got it throughout the world this uh, brazil is uh, the place with the more biodiversity okay so it's not present in a textbook you please note it down what is that brazil brazil is having a more uh, biodiversity good okay now biodiversity a case study a case study and just listen carefully and uh, it's a uh, very very close to our rtpp also right you can you can compare this ramagundam with uh, our rtpp right now let's see it's about ramagundam and the way this ramagundam is present means it is present in the uh, karimnagar district karimnagar district and uh, 60 or 70 years ago this ramagundam uh, this uh, place had a uh, dense forest dense what is meant by dense the means thick forest the means that place was a uh, very very thick uh, filled with a very thick uh, forest and uh, in that forest we can find a uh, great uh, heritage of uh, wildlife the means a great variety variety of uh, wildlife the means different varieties of uh, plants and animals were present in that and even in that uh, forest area was extended extended means are uh, spreaded up to this manchurial of uh, adilabad district okay so from karimnagar to adilabad district this uh, ramagundam forest ramagundam forest was uh, located okay and even in that forest we can find a great varieties of uh, wild animals like say this uh, tigers have you seen this uh, tigers yeah mostly uh, we can find all these animals in uh, discovery channel we can find them right so tigers the next uh, leopards then deers deers the next uh, hyenas then a fox then a wild boar wild boar means you know the pigs generally we can find in our surroundings but when that present in wild we call them as wild boars then bears right the next are pythons pythons cobras then a pork pines pork pines means we call them as mullapandi like then owls owls gudlaguba the next are hares then a monitor lizard generally we call this as a urumu urumu the next are scorpions scorpions then germandal germandal what are they means they are a kind of a 
desert spiders desert spiders right okay so in this way in this uh, forest area we can find a great varieties of uh, uh, wild uh, animals but uh, after the erection of uh, thermal power station erection means after uh, this uh, implementation construction of this uh, thermal power station at ramagundam then what men many other industries are also started okay so automatically what men this uh, human activities increased so in our to work uh, in the power station and uh, other industries many people migrated to that place and then they started uh, constructing their homes the next shops uh, then offices roads then automatically what men many buildings were constructed and even the uh, roads and then the uh, stone quarries stone quarries means you know these are the industries where this large stones are converted into small pieces like uh, you know gravel you know kankara right that is said to be stone quarries so in this way all these things were developed uh, in the top place and uh, so what it means forest area was uh, cleared forest area was uh, cleared and uh, then several organisms started uh, disappearing so as the human activities are increasing human population is increasing for uh, constructing the houses the next uh, for laying the roads what are uh, they did that means that they started uh, cutting down this uh, forest area so automatically what been the animals which were uh, living in that in that place they lost their shelter and so many of these uh, animals they started uh, disappearing that means many of them were killed uh, and uh, some animals they went away went away means they went to some other places as a result their number becomes uh, decreased right and naturally that even so though it was once known as a tiger valley tiger valley means in that place we can find uh, many tigers okay that's why that place was uh, considered as a tiger valley but now there is no sign of tigers we cannot find uh, any tigers in that place why why means uh, there because of this uh, human population and even the normal animals like a uh, foxes deers germandals are also not seen okay tigers means they are okay but even the common animals like a uh, say this uh, fox a uh, deer and even germandals were uh, also not seen today right and uh, even uh, in this area we can find a less dense uh, forest less dense forest means yeah of course here uh, we can find the forest but uh, now that forest is a uh, very 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 thin very very thin means that means the forest area was uh, totally destroyed okay that's why we cannot find a uh, uh, thick forest okay that's why we can call that as a less uh, dense forest and uh, even today we can find uh, some uh, varieties of animals like a uh, pythons then a cobras then a deer scorpions like this these animals can be seen in navaris in the top area right and even recently they also found uh, this uh, bears these are uh, bears and uh, we can find this a uh, peacocks also peacocks and uh, say this uh, bears were recently found okay so this is uh, the story of uh, story of uh, this ramagundam now like here this ramagundam case study is a uh, very very close to our rail sima thermal power station also you know even we can compare each and everything with our rtpp even before the starting of this rtpp that place was a, a dense forest area okay whatever the story we studied here the same story is applicable to our rtpp also our rtpp also you know nowadays if you carefully observe we can find a uh, human settlements increased even in rtpp and uh, so now that the forest area gets converted into what residential place right okay so because of uh, our saying what we did the pins we destroyed uh, we destroyed uh, this uh, forest the pins both the plants and the uh, animals now here we can find some differences what is the difference between uh, 
the situation about the types of animals present 70 years ago and uh, now. So in uh, 70 years back, we can find a great varieties of animals, but now very few varieties of animals are available, like uh, say pythons, cobras, deer, scorpions like this. What might happen to tigers of Ramagundam? What happened? You know, it was considered as a tiger valley, but now we cannot consider that as a tiger valley. Why? Why means because of this uh, erection, erection of uh, this uh, past station and uh, human settlements and all these things, many tigers, many tigers were killed and uh, some tigers, they went to some other places. Okay, that's why now we cannot find any tigers at Ramagundam now. Peacocks love eating snakes. Can you guess why they dwell in this place? Oh, we already learned just recently uh, this peacocks have been sighted. Okay, why peacocks are still present there? Means, what is the food there to this peacocks? Yeah, especially this are snakes, rats like this. Okay, as uh, different varieties of uh, snakes that are available there at Ramagundam even today. Okay, that's why we can find uh, this uh, peacocks at Ramagundam Park Station. Okay. <clears throat> so when animals vanish forever from the earth, it is that we extinct. Have you seen uh, the movie Jurassic Park? You know, this movie is uh, completely based on which animal? Yeah, that's a dinosaur, uh, dinosaur, ketosaurs, all these things. Okay, can you find the uh, dinosaurs nowadays? No, but uh, they were present in our past, but not uh, now. So what happened to them? That means those animals were completely disappeared from uh, the face of the planet. So here, what is meant by vanish? Vanish means disappeared. So the living organisms which are, which were completely disappeared from uh, the face of the planet, such animals are considered as uh, extinct. They are called uh, extinct. So the good example is uh, we can say, say this uh, uh, dinosaurs, dinosaurs, right? Okay, and according to one famous scientist that is Evo Wilson. You now here, can you see there? Can you see him? Yeah, Evo Wilson. Every year, around uh, 10,000 species, around uh, 10,000 species or 27 species per day. Here yeah, the number is very very important. 10,000 species per year or 27 species per day become extinct throughout uh, the world. You know, if uh, you know this process goes on like this, then what means? Then uh, ultimately, even it becomes very very difficult for the human beings. Okay, by means I know we are totally depending on uh, plants and animals for everything. So when all the plants and animals they started disappearing, then ultimately we will be suffering. Okay, that's why we should be very, very careful and uh, it is our responsibility to protect each and every living creature in this planet, whether it's a plant or an animal. Got it? So what is when extinct? Extinct means the plants and the animal species which uh, were completely disappear, which were completely disappeared such animals or plants can be called as extinct. Would it? Now the next one. Endangered species. Endangered species. So here, uh, the paints in a zoo, there was one uh, signboard. There was one uh, signboard and over that uh, signboard, uh, there is one sentence. What is that? Do you want to see the cruel creature that damage severely to the nature and its biodiversity? Please turn this a signboard. So over the board, this sentence was a present. So when uh, we turn this a signboard, at the back side, we can find a mirror. We can find a mirror. So who will appear in that mirror? You will appear. That means you are. It, it doesn't mean that you are responsible for that. But here, uh, its uh, meaning is, Human being is a responsible. Human being is uh, the cruel creature which is uh, damaging severely to this uh, nature and also biodiversity. Correct? Right? Okay. The next uh, vanishing means 
It is a warning signal about organisms whose number have declined rapidly and might be wiped off. That means, here what is meant by endangered species means they are present uh, in the past and even today but uh, their number is decreasing. Their number is uh, decreasing very very rapidly. Okay, if uh, we are not taking care of them then what means? In the future, in the coming future, these animals become extinct. You got the difference? What is meant by endangered species means they are present now, even now also. But uh, when in the future, they become totally disappear. Okay. So such animals can be called as a, such organisms can be called as a endangered species. Right. So according to one organization that is a WWF. What is meant by that means World Wildlife Federation. World Wildlife Federation or IUWC which means International Union for Wildlife Conservation. International Union for Wildlife Conservation. So this organization both are same, right? So this organization it published uh, a book okay and uh, what you find in that book means in that book we can find a complete list of uh, endangered and uh, threatened species okay so in the beginning of the lesson we learned about this uh, Guti Tarangula and uh, Great Indian Bustard right what are these two yeah these two are uh, said to be endangered so here so what you call that book means that book is called a uh, red data book a red data book or a red list book you know red you know for uh, why we use this red color red color indicates a danger that means these plants and animals are in danger okay that's why we call that book as a red data book or a red list book right so in that uh, here we can find a picture and in this picture we can find uh, different types of animals and uh, plants. What are these animals and the plants means? These are under endangered species. Okay, that means their number is decreasing and uh, in a future they are going to disappear. Here, can you see them? What is, what is this? The first one? Yeah, first one, lion. The next one? Red uh, fox, the next uh, single horned uh, rhino, then vulture, then spotted uh, cheetah deer, then loris, then a black spider monkey, then a wild cat, then a plants like a uh, Cycles, then the Ravulvia serpentina, then the Nepenthes, and the Sandalwood, Sandalwood, right? So these are all the plants and animals. Don't think that only these are the plants and animals that come under endangered. There are many, but uh, this is just an example. You know, when we talk about this uh, Sandalwood, Sandalwood, you can remember one person who was that can you identify this person who is this yeah very good he is a virapan he is a virapan and uh, you know this virapan is uh, a smuggler he was a smuggler and uh, he he destroyed uh, much of the forest area present in uh, tamil nadu and uh, Karna uh, tamil nadu and uh, karnataka states for what for uh, the sake of this uh, sandalwood for a sandalwood and also for uh, the tusk for the tusk of an elephant what right? okay right now the next one here we can find the table and uh, in this table from this table we can find uh, which plants here flora what is meant by flora flora means a uh, flower flower means it's a plants Flora is the other name for the plants and the fauna means the animals. So under this we can find uh, different varieties of plants and animals 
which come under this endangered list right so you go through this uh, table and so that you get an idea which plants and animals no don't think that this is the only list this is only one example right okay then what's the next one means endemic species endemic you know when you observe our whole world throughout the world we can find different varieties of plants and animals okay but whenever we carefully observe some organisms they are present only in certain areas only in some uh, some uh, separate places for example when uh, we talk about the kangaroo kangaroo can you find this kangaroo in uh, rtpp or pradutur or karapa like this now where it is present yeah it is present only in uh, australia in uh, australia and when we take this a kiwi not fruit yeah it's an uh, animal right so where we can find this it is present in a new zealand in a new zealand and the next uh, peacock and a white tiger where they are present they are present only in uh, india right in this way we can also find uh, some other examples like say this a uh, echidna echidna can be seen in australia then the new zealand then at tasmania like this and uh, spiny ant eater spiny ant eater is other name for echidna then what's the next one platypus even platypus also seen in uh, only tasmania or the australia like this got it and uh, you know if uh, you carefully absorb the newspaper you can find that uh, what a news article daily we can find uh, that kind of a news article so and so people are uh, caught by this police and uh, they <coughs> they capture this logs okay you know you got an idea what i'm talking about yeah i'm talking about uh, what a red sandal yerra chandanam yerra chandanam you know no most uh, some people in order to get uh, the money in a easy way what they doing means they are cutting down this red sandal and uh, they are selling they are smuggling that to different parts of the world you know this red sandal this red sandal is present only in our area in our district in our district right you know nallamala forest only in this forest area we can find this uh, red sandal and uh, that's why there is a great demand for this red sandal in throughout the world okay that's why most of the people are uh, cutting this uh, uh, these plants and they are uh, smuggling them to the uh, different places and even see this uh, india shows good number of endemic species for example when we take uh, amphibians amphibians whatever the number of amphibians we can find in the whole world whole world among them 62% are present only in india you go to the point among all the amphibians 62% are present uh, in uh, india and even when we take this uh, lizards different varieties of lizards right so among them 50% 50% are present only in india that we you know which place means that's a western gods western gods correct yeah so these terms you know extinct then endangered and the endemic these are the very very important for the, your exams then uh, the next one species concept what is mean by this means when we take uh, different varieties of living organisms like the plants and animals they reproduce so the plants and animal species which are able to reproduce sexually sexually that uh, concept can be called as a species concept that means the plants and animals that uh, reproduce sexually those animals comes under those animals come under species concept got it but we cannot say that all the living organisms they undergo only sexual reproduction we can find uh, the animals some animals they undergo a sexual reproduction also a sexual reproduction like uh, you see when we take this amoeba it undergoes by binary fission the next uh, fragmentation 
okay say for example bacteria bacteria by binary fission the next yeast yeast by what do you call that that is a uh, uh, budding we can say it's a budding okay and even we can find uh, different methods like uh, fragmentation then uh, parthenogenesis regeneration okay these are all said to be different uh, methods of uh, reproduction which come under asexual reproduction okay so to these organisms this uh, species concept is not applicable so we can say finally species concept uh, is applicable only to the living organisms plants and animals which reproduce sexually but not uh, asexually good children and uh, with this we come to the end of this session and uh, thank you for listening and uh, have a nice day thank you